Consumer behavior is one of the subjects or topics that you need to know and you need to understand. I say that it can be a topic like is the case in the subject principles of marketing. Also, in other programs, consumer behavior is a subject by itself. Consumer behavior is also sometimes known as buyer behavior. And the three main components that will be covered in this particular lesson are number one, the decision making process. Number two, factors that influence the decision making process and number three the decision making unit there are five steps in the decision making process these are number one need identification number two information search number three evaluation of alternatives Number four, decision to buy or actual purchase. And number five, post-purchase behavior. The first thing that happens is that a customer is going to realize that they have a need. They see an advert which could influence or trigger a realization that if they buy a certain type of product, they are going to be from where they are to a better place. Advertising is one of the mediums that allows companies to convey messages that may influence a customer's purchasing process because it is when the customer has come into contact with the information that they are able to appreciate that there is a need which once fulfilled is going to help them move from one step to another. After someone realizes that they have a need, like we all do, what we begin to do is that we start to ask people about which college we can go to. We ask others or go to Google to find out what kind of programs different schools offer. We also talk to our peers. We also talk to different people. We get into the mode of searching for information. This is very important to understand because those that are studying marketing and practicing marketing must always identify the best places where they can place their adverts so that prospective customers are able to access the information. After the prospective customer has collected as much information as they could, they are now going to look at each one of that information that they have collected from different companies to be able to make a decision. What they're going to do is they're going to look at the alternatives and evaluate which one is going to meet their specific needs. For example, they could be looking at the cost of studying a particular program, the mode of study, whether it is distance, full-time or part-time. They are also going to look at the credibility of an institution. They're going to look at the probabilities of them advancing into other programs after completing a prior program. These are but examples of what a student may have to consider before they choose which university they're going to go to or how they're going to study. Customers access information and begin to evaluate information. It is at this particular point and this particular point of importance that those that are studying marketing and those that are practicing marketing need to put up propositions and to be able to engage the customer on how best the company is going to be able to fulfill the needs of the customer. For example, this is where an institution would come up and say, yes, our tuition fees are 5,000 per term, but what you can do is that you can pay 50% for a start and you can pay the balance after two months. It is something that a customer is going to consider compared to a university that may demand that the fees be paid in full and at the same time. There is therefore need that in the practice of marketing, you as a person who is studying and indeed the person who is practicing needs to come up with selling points that you're going to present to the customer so that the customer is more likely to go with your offer.
after evaluation of alternatives, a customer is then going to make a mental decision to purchase of your product. This means that they will tell their colleagues that tomorrow I will be going to a particular place to buy a particular product. If need be, they may even take the day off. What is important to note at this particular point is that the customer is going to come into direct contact with your company's representatives. It's possible that this may have happened before, but there was no financial commitment on the side of the customer. At this particular point, the customer has made a mental decision and they have decided that part of what they're going to do is commit to a contractual relationship by paying subscription, by paying whatever it is that they are paying to your company so that they can get in exchange for the money a particular product. At this point, the customer is ready to buy. Also to note, at this point, the customer is going to be more sensitive than ever before. They're going to be mindful of whether the person who is speaking to them, representing the company, has adequate knowledge. They are going to be able to detect that there could be leadership or supervisory problems in the company. The customer is very alert about your seating arrangements. The customer is very, very alert about how they have been welcomed. It is at this particular point that there's also emphasis on what is known as moment of truth. What follows the decision to buy and the actual purchase is a stage called post-purchase behavior. Post, like you already know, simply means that which comes after. So for example, post malaria, post, you get the drill. After a customer has purchased of a product and they have used that particular product, two things are going to result. Number one, the customer is going to be happy with what they purchased. And number two, the customer is not happy with what they purchased. One of the important things to do after a customer has purchased and use of a product is to call that particular customer, ask them if they had any challenges, and if indeed they have any challenges, resolve those particular challenges. This, I repeat, is very, very important. The idea behind post purchase behavior is to appreciate which position the customer is eventually in. Are they in the category of unsatisfied customers or they are in the category of satisfied customers? The desire in the study and practice of marketing is that the interaction with customers leads to a positive relationship. <laughs> And that is it on the decision-making process. If you would like more of these lessons, I would like us to chat. Send me a message to the WhatsApp number 0966-930-260. Next, I'm going to present on the factors that affect the decision-making process. And also, I'm going to talk about the decision-making unit. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.